let's start by clearing up a bit of possible confusion. There are two things here, one of which you haven't learned yet, probably. Mass, uh, symbol M, is measured in kilograms. There's a different concept called force. It's measured in newtons and has symbol F. You don't know this yet, but I just need to clear up the language. Weight is a particular kind of force, which means uh, its unit is newton. It's a different kind of stuff from mass. In physics, mass and weight are not the same. So uh, one thing I noticed when I was recording a draft of this was that I started casually using mass and weight interchangeably when I was talking about center of mass. And the reason for that is because the difference between mass and weight is a factor of g, and when you calculate the center of mass, or the center of gravity, the g cancels. And so the two answers are the same. I just wanted to carefully distinguish mass and weight, even though it amounts to the same thing when you are done canceling, calculating center of mass. So just wanted to clarify that. So whenever I say center of mass, I could be saying center of gravity. And whenever I say weight, I could just as easily be saying mass. And I probably mean mass if we're just doing the center of mass calculation. But it's no harm done. You get to the same answer. Center of mass is like an average position for a set of masses. Let's say we have coordinate axis starting at zero meters going positive to the right. If I have a one kilogram mass here and a one kilogram mass here, then their average position you would guess would be at the five meter mark. The way we could calculate that would we'd say four meters plus six meters over two because they're equal weights. And so that's literally taking the average and we get five meters. Likewise, if I had one kilogram here, I could have 2 meters plus 4 meters plus 6 meters divided by 3. That would be the average position, and it would be 4 meters. Now I'm going to do something a little different. Suppose I put another 1 kilogram mass here at the 6 meter mark. Now it, we could view it as having 4 equal masses, so we would have 2 meters plus four meters, plus six meters, plus six meters, and divide by four. And that would be 18 over four is 4.5 meters. I could add another one kilogram mass here. So then we would have two meters, plus four meters, plus six meters, plus six meters, plus six meters, over 5. You can see this is starting to get tedious. So 24 divided by 5 is 4.8 meters. You can see the balance is moving more towards where there's more mass. So how could I abbreviate that? I mean, if I want to put a 17 kilogram mass there, I don't want to write out 6 meters 17 times. So these have all been an average. So we do what's called a weighted average. This is actually the origin of the term, weighted average. We could do that same calculation by saying 2 meters plus 4 meters plus 3 times 6 meters divided by 5 to get the 4.8 meters. Same calculation. But really, how do we know how much we're weighing there? What if we have some random masses like 2.8 kilograms, 1.3 kilograms, etc.? How much should each one count? the bigger the mass, the more it should count. So what we're really doing is we're saying the x center of mass that we're looking for, the balance point, the middle, is actually the sum of mxi's over sum of m's, or you could call them mi's. And m sub i just means m1, m2, m3, however many ones you need. And so the sum of mi means m1 plus m2 plus dot dot dot. In other words, the total mass. Adding a bit more detail, 2 meters plus 4 meters plus 3 times 6 meters over 5 
really what we're doing is we're saying one kilogram times two meter because that had a mass of one kilogram. So its weight is one, its weight in the average is one. One kilogram times four meter, three kilograms times six meter, and it's divided by five kilogram. So we get two kilogram meter plus four kilogram meter plus 18 kilogram meter over five kilograms, which is 24 kilogram meter divided by five kilogram. Kilogram cancels out, we get back two meters. So that's 4.8 meters as before. Now, what if I had been doing the center of gravity where I was using weights. The first mass would have been multiplied by g. The second mass would have been multiplied by g. The third mass would have been multiplied by g. And the total mass would have been multiplied by g. All of those g's cancel out, which is why I said center of mass and center of gravity are the same. So if I get sloppy and say center of weight, uh, center of gravity, center of mass, and if I talk about adding up the weights, same thing as adding up the masses, in effect when we're done with this calculation. Mass and weight are not the same, but in this calculation it's okay. So if you multiply each position by its weight, how many times it should count, and then divide by the total number amount of weight that you have, you will actually get the center of mass. This can also be done with calculus for a continuous object, uh, but sticking to the discrete case, this is the formula for x position of center of mass. You can also do this in two dimensions. Like many vector things, you can simply do the x and ignore the y's entirely. And you can do the y's and ignore the x's entirely. You can do them as two completely separate calculations. So you can have an x center of mass vector, and you know, position vectors sometimes used r or other symbols. And what that really means is it's a vector x center of mass y center of mass. And the y center of mass looks just like that. It's sum of the mi yi divided by sum of the mi. So that and that would be your formulas for center of mass.